My siblings, please reach out your hands and prayers of women. Most high, we ask that I may speak with your voice and that we may hear with your heart. Glory to you, Christ, you are the word of God. Glory to you, Christ, you are the word of God. God so loved the world that they gave their only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. Glory to you, Christ, you are the word of God. May Christ be with you. And also with you. A reading from the good news according to the book of John. Glory to you, O Christ. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that they gave their only son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send their son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him isn't judged. Whoever doesn't believe in him is already judged because they don't believe in the name of God's only son. And this is the basis for judgment. The light came into the world, and people love darkness more than light, but their actions are evil. All who do wicked things hate the light and don't come to the light for fear that their actions will be exposed to the light. Whoever does the truth comes to the light so that it can be seen that their actions were done in God. This is the gospel of our Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. So remember that we just did the flipping tables on the moneylenders thing. Today, this isn't how much we suck. It's that error is the only way we learn. That the basis of our humanity, as we were formed, is to err and learn and grow and try and fail and learn and grow. But to learn and grow, we have to acknowledge our mistakes. We have to confront them. So in Numbers we hear, the people became impatient on the road. They spoke against God and Moses. Why would you bring us up from Egypt to kill us in the desert? There's no food and water, and yet the food that we have, that we just said we didn't have any of, is something we detest. Does anybody else hear humans acting like cats here? Mm -hmm. I'm starving and that's not food. And when we're talking about these stories, these human tribal stories of the Israelites, I'm suddenly wondering if they camped on a snake nest and blamed it on God, or if they refused the man and the snakes came and ate the man and incidentally bit the people and they blamed it on God. But sure, it wasn't their fault the snake showed up. Oh, no, 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 that was God's fault. And many were bit and died from the venom. And translator, venomous, not poisonous. Venomous if it bites you, it hurts you. Poisonous if you bite it, it hurts you. Anyway. The people decided out of fear of the snakes to apologize to God. And having apologized to God, then they feel legitimate asking for help. Anybody else have that bug? I need to apologize profoundly before I can get any help. Just me. So the Israelites in Barrett ask Moses to pray for help. And he does. And God, interestingly, has them lift up the symbol of their suffering. I wonder why we use the cross. They are instructed to lift up the symbol, look up and at the symbol, and they live. So let's think about that.
And then Psalm 107 says, some of the redeemed were fools because of their sinful ways. I thought that was interesting. Fools because of their sinful ways or sinful ways because they've been foolish. Some of each, I suspect. They suffered because of their wickedness. Same. So they cried out to God in their distress. Same. We can resonate also with what the psalmist says next. Next. God saved them from the desperate circumstances. God gave the order and healed them. God rescued them from their pit. Thanks be to God that they did. And then Ephesians talks about being a, like a dead person because of the things you did wrong, your offenses against God, against that right living. You used to live like people of this world, grabby and gimme, right? You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. And I would suggest a destructive spiritual spiral. However, God is rich in mercy. God brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. God did this because of great love. Great love they have. We are saved by grace from our own condemnation. And it takes a whole lot of grace and convincing to get us to let go of our own condemnation. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possess. It's not something you can be proud of. Instead, we're God's accomplishment. We don't own or make our union with God. We're just welcomed into it. God made the union as God made and is making us. We are God's accomplishment created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. And then we hit the gospel pointing out that just as Moses lifted up the snake, so must the human one be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And we hear that John 3.16, that we see plastered everywhere. People just don't seem to go on from it. God didn't send their son into the world to judge the world in terms of to render condemnation. Perhaps dismissing the case as being without merit, Remember the times that the judge comes and frees, comes and gives back rights taken wrongly. Thinking about the 50th anniversary of the Bolt decision coming up. So there's more than one way to think about judge when we do see Christ as a judge. Christ is the arbiter who says, yeah, and I don't care. And I welcome this person home. And then we go on, that the world may be saved through him, whoever believes in our eternal universal Christ is a judge. Those who don't believe that there's a way out only have their being in judgment, their own judgment, society's judgment. They don't have a way out. They don't believe in a way out. And no, it's not particularly this name or that name of Christ. Christ is a whole lot bigger than all names. But it's invoking Christ, calling on the name of Christ, whichever one you like. It's invoking that right. Invoking your God amendment to the human rule. And if you don't believe it, you can't access it because you won't let yourself. I've seen people believe in it and access it from a whole bunch of different faith paths. And I've seen them shine that light. Because this is how we know. The light came into the world. And people love staying in the shadows. Benightedness. Hiding. Lurking. 
more than the light. For their actions, or how they saw their actions, were evil. And those who do wicked things and those who think that they've done things that are wicked and they think they can't be forgiven and think that there's not a way out, that no one can forgive them because they can't forgive themselves. Hate the light. Don't come to the light for fear that the actions that are so loud in their minds will be exposed to them. Whoever does the truth comes to the light so that it can be seen that the actions are done in God. And there we have it. That's the goal. To do things and live in a way that gives brightness and growth and healing and warmth and everything else that we think about coming from light. That's our calling, is to come from the light. To bring our own healing, some from our failures, some through our failures, and bring that healing to others to shine that light. And so, thinking about that healing, light shining, growing thing, how can we do that? What works for you? 